public resources. And the result, well, what we have called value for money. Fiscal space that is necessary to have other uh, development challenges in terms of education, culture, health, in general, access to better services, better public services. Maps of the procurement uh, system in Argentina is the first diagnosis, as I said before, the first comprehensive diagnosis in the country, something that we've been promoting for many years and that we finally achieved this time and in a good way. We started this exercise two years ago, May 2022, and has finally been approved and published July this year. It's been led by the National Procurement Office with support from the two banks, IDB and World Bank, with whom it's been a pleasure to work with and a privilege, actually to improve the system of procurements in Argentina. This final MAPS report, we will be presenting the shows, the, the recommendations and the findings today. We have developed a, a plan for short, medium and long-term actions. We are sure that you will be successful with this in the following month. There are many recommendations that we will uh, show and Gabriel will highlight some of them. I believe the most important is the regulatory framework that is standardized. That's a long-term challenge that will have a big impact once it's achieved. And on the other hand, also, Argentina should have a advanced uh, electronic procurement tools that are flexible, modular, secure, that can secure the achieve the goal that we all want. The strengthening of the National Procurement Office also is very important. So now we just want to ratify the commitment of the IDB to support the country in the action plan and guarantee that better procurement processes will allow us to foster the economic development and the management of the public resources of Argentina. Last, I would like to thank in the name of the bank to everybody that collaborated, public officers, authorities, experts, evaluators, members of the association, to all of you, thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Nicolás. I give back the floor to you. Thank you very much, Javier, for the, your words. Another important ally of this assessment was the World Bank. I would like to invite Jean-Jacques Bedox, Procurement Management for Latin America and the Caribbean. Please tell us a little bit how you see this, this assessment from the World Bank point of view. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Greetings from Panama. I'm right now here. I would like, first of all, to thank the National Procurement Office, particularly Soledad, for her work. Of course, this MASP assessment, it's an assessment that has the support of the Secretariat and the banks, sometimes other banks, but nothing can be done without the investment of human resources, the time, the devotion and motivation of the national authorities, in this case, the National Procurement Office. That's why I really want to thank you, because without your help, your leadership, this wouldn't have been possible. It's a difficult assessment. We know that. It's long. It takes resources and time at national level. So congratulations. Congratulations to your office and to you, Soledad. Also, I want to thank the Secretariat of the OECD. We have to know that there are few products or actions that are done at global level, I mean world level, in terms of public procurement. And thanks uh, to this office, particularly to the work of Nicolas and his team, we can have a global product that is used in several countries that are clients of the World Bank 
and also all around the world, including in several countries in Northern Europe, for example. I believe this is a good example of the role uh, that this institution can have. We also count on them to have better actions that we can promote together for the benefit of different countries. I want to thank our colleagues, our friends from the IDB, Javier and all his team, both teams, actually both banks. Uh, we have several uh, consultants that have worked really hard on this assessment. Thank you, all of you, thanks. I believe the maps shows, and particularly Argentina, I, I know that it's the first time you do it. It's done officially in Argentina for the first time and also takes into account the SPP module. MAPS shows that it can be used and can lead to an action plan in a context that is very different from uh, one country to another, socially speaking. This MAPS allows you to have a diagnose but also helps you to see the possible actions in certain economic and social contexts. We are very hopeful that this maps will be one of the frameworks and tools that will be used for future investments and actions. I also would like to focus on the action plan. I believe this really focuses and highlights some actions that we believe are very important. First of all, the recognition of value for money principle. There are several cases, particularly in Latin America, where this is not the key point of the public procurement. I believe this is important that in this context of Argentina, value for money should be one of the priorities in the MAPS assessment, and, and this should be highlighted. Second thing, second, second action, the possibility to have standard documents like templates. I know the National Procurement Office is already working on that. We believe that this is really a major step, and you can have our support for this. Another aspect, Javier mentioned this before, is connected with the electronic management of public procurement, particularly the data and the fact that we have open data available for public procurement in Argentina. This is our one priority action to help Argentina in this context. Again, I believe this is one of the most positive points. Also, I want to say that during this time, we had to face a situation that has been hard, or is particular in Argentina, but also in other countries. And it's connected with special regimes that Argentina had. And that today, with this action plan, we would be eliminating this uh, special regimes. I, we believe this is very positive. And we want to have one framework that is the same for the different uh, public companies. What we are going to do in this assessment is not final, it's like a starting point. So the World Bank, through an investment operation, is planning to finance and support the National Procurement Office and most of the actions within the maps. And you can count on us because currently we have this investment plan through the public sector. You can count on the World Bank and the team. 
I want to thank all my team in Argentina and Washington that supported and will continue to support Argentina so that they can implement these MAPS actions. Well, to conclude, I want to say that again, count, count on us, count on the IDB. I know that we work uh, together for Argentina. We have to remember that the public uh, procurement system and this MAPS assessment is one of the elements of an economic and social policy that is key, not just for the expenditure of the government, but all the aspects of the economic and social policy of the country. I, I am really confident, I trust that the government will take this into account, this assessment into account, and the action plan. And they see this as, an, as a tool to implement their policies. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Jean-Jacques. I would like to mention that the banks not only supported this assessment, but also, as they mentioned, they are key partners of the MAPS initiative and the MAPS secretariat which is located in Paris. Well, now, please, Gabriel Beczynski, she's a specialist consultant in public procurement. We would like to hear uh, very quickly which were the conclusions and recommendations of this work that you led in Argentina. Please. Thank you very much, Nicolás. Yes. We, we will make it very brief because we have a lot of things to say, but we have to summarize. As has been mentioned, included the main model of MAPS but, and also the SPP model. And first of all, I want to thank the IDB and the World Bank and the National Procurement Office because they trust uh, in me to lead this assessment and this implementation of the methodology along with another group. I'm not going to mention them now because it would take us a, a long time but uh, we had a, a great support from the bank and from the procurement office. Also from the MAP Secretariat, we had a nice exchange uh, uh, of information. This was fundamental to be able to carry this assessment. Well, the objectives of this assessment was to, oh, where, sorry, first of all, to have the first MAPS evaluation that was approved by with the quality seal of the secretariat and this has already been mentioned by javier but it's within the first time of this year we have this assessment made for the first time in 2024 Second, uh, we had to identify the gaps in terms of international best practices. From the very beginning, there was a clear perception that there was a, that there were some significant gaps, and it was important to identify them and to qualify them, to assess them, which kind of gaps we were talking about and which solution could uh, call for. And this is good for a public procurement system such as the Argentina. It's one of the first in the regions to define the concept of public procurement system. And also they created a governing body for this system at the beginning of the early in the 90s. But it was one of the last to implement a system of electronic procurement, though today is working and it has some strengths and weaknesses that we're going to mention later on. 
but it has this dichotomy. On the one hand, it was one of the first to have this procurement system and some of the good practices, but at the same time, it's one of the last to implement certain trends uh, of modern public uh, practices. Also, we need to count with a baseline for reforms in the public procurement system. This was carried out, as mentioned before, between May 2022 and July 2023. Although it's important to mention, because we are just introducing this now, it has just been approved by the Secretariat, that in the middle, uh, we had elections, we had a different government now. So at the beginning of this year, with the new authorities, we could define the action plan for, for the implementation of our recommendations. Well, as we mentioned before, the IDB and the World Bank co-led the assessment and the National Procurement Office was the national coordinated institution of this uh, public procurement system. And uh, one other thing that we want to highlight is that the scope of this assessment included goods and services, but not public works. Despite the National Procurement Office since 2018, it's also the governing body uh, for public works. We decided not to include public works in this assessment because it has been done, the, the, there was an evaluation done using the MAPS evaluation. Although it's not official and it's not, it has not been approved by the Secretary, it had been done in the past for public works. For that reason, we decided to focus on goods and services and not include public works in this time. So let's move on to the findings and recommendations of each of the pillars. In the first pillar that is connected with the legal regulatory framework and policy framework, the most significant gap that we detected is that there is no there are there is no law in the country. What, what we have, it's a decree that uh, has been issued by the executive power with delegated powers at that time. And it has uh, more than 20 years in force. It has actually been regulated and supplemented by additional decrees. So, there is no clear uh, legal framework that is solid and substantial and can be trusted as if it was a law issued by the parliament. Also, it's been more than 20 years since that decree. So it's really necessary to have a, a comprehensive regulatory reform this should be a, a law to comprehensively regulate the regime for the procurement of goods and services. We could discuss the public works there, which, as I said, was not included in this assessment. But for goods and services, we should uh, have a broader scope because right now, this uh, the scope for the regime of this decree is quite limited. So as Jean Jacques mentioned, there are other regimes and exceptions and practices, and it should be very important that within this new law, we could eliminate or just simplify these uh, exceptions and other unjustified regimes 
Another significant gap is the absence of policies for public procurement or for sustainable public procurement. We don't have that right now. Although the National Procurement Office has a series of actions to, to implement best practices in terms of public procurement in general and public procurement sustainable in particular, there is no national policy on this. And it should be fundamental to, to have a policy, both in public procurement and in SPP. As for pillar number two, which is connected with the institutional framework and management capacity, the main weakness that we detected is that the National Procurement Office is weak in terms of as a governing body, let's say. We mentioned when we described the context that this office was created early in the 90s. It was one of the first countries in the region to have this governing body for public procurement system. But the hierarchy and institutional insertion has been changing throughout the time. And, and it's not clearly defined and it's not perceived as a true governing body of the public procurement system. And therefore, our recommendation is that in the new procurement law that we just talked about in the pillar one, we need to clearly define the roles, the responsibilities, and the institutional hierarchy of the National Procurement Office. Going back to the original conception that when it was created early in the 90s, that conceived the system of public procurement as part of the fi financial um, institution of the country. That was lost with time and the office was left uh, in a gray area, let's say, uh, when it comes to the institutional context. Another gap, another significant gap, it's the that the information is poorly organized. We generate a lot of data, but we don't have so much information. What we uh, recommend is to extend the application of the system compare, uh, extend it to the management, to the uh, contract management that is not covered right now, and also integrate it, this electronic platform Comprar, we should integrate it with the other systems of the national administration, particularly financial administration, so as to have um, inputs, uh, information to develop comprehensive procurement strategies. As for pillar number three, what we detected is that the levels of efficiency, effectiveness, and competition in procurement processes in the sample that we have analyzed is relatively low. So here, what we recommend is to strengthen, particularly the planning uh, in the process of procurement. We have to strengthen the competition. We should have a, a better average of bets. And uh, something that uh, Jean-Jacques mentioned is implement better uh, the principles of value for money that is quite absent in the process that we have analyzed, as well as the sustainability principles. Another characteristic, something, another gap that we detected is a poor participation of companies, in particular SMEs. Therefore, what we recommend is to promote dialogue with the private sector and coordinate policies with other areas 
that develop support programs or financing programs for SMEs so that they can access the market of uh, public procurement. Finally, pillar four that is connected with uh, accountability, integrity, and transparency, and anti-corruption. There is a low level of participation in civil society in general. So what we recommend is to implement mechanisms to foster civil society participation. Another weakness is that the audit focuses mainly on legal aspects, on compliance with the expenditure limits. What we suggest for uh, control audit or control bodies is to improve their practices, practices related to public procurement, uh, better performance audits. We don't have them right now. Finally, what we detected is that <clears throat> we detected in the system that there is no independent administrative procedure for challenging procedures. Uh, bidders can challenge a process, but there is no administrative body that is independent that can settle and review and settle those uh, challenges by the contracted entities. Uh, therefore, the uh, resolution in the administrative area, it's in, a, in another hierarchical level of the contracting entities. What we recommend is to create an independent administrative body to settle these challenges, or maybe analyze the possibility of granting those powers to another existing body so that you can have an administrative uh, way of settling these issues. Uh, those would be the main findings and recommendations, very briefly. Eventually, if there are questions, we can go deeper in any of them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gabriel. Thanks for making it brief and so concrete. We will uh, share the link so that people can see this report because it actually has much more information that we can show in a short webinar. I would like to move on uh, and give the floor to Soledad, the head of the National Procurement Office in Argentina, so as to talk a little bit about the lessons learned from the MAPS uh, assessment, oh, the, the central module and the SPP module, and what you could take from this uh, the application of this methodology in Argentina. So, Soledad, please. Thank you very much. Can everyone listen to me? Yes, all right. Okay, today we will share the lessons learned with the methodology, the MAPS methodology, based on these four pillars that Gabriel described. Uh, yes, the legal regulatory framework, the institutional framework, how the system works, the integrity, the transparency. This assessment, as Gabriel mentioned, was performed between May 2022 and July 2023. It's important to highlight that this assessment is very complex, takes a lot of time and dedication. This has been done in parallel, both modules. Argentina is the first, I believe, the first country to go with this module, the SPP module, with all the opportunities and uh, that this brings. The maps in these four pillars shows the significant gaps uh, about what would be ideal and the current situation of uh, the current situation, December 2023 of our office. Before we move on to the weaknesses, I would like to highlight the 
strength. The National Procurement Office is the governing body of goods and services and public works, so we can have a global vision of both things. We have two electronic systems uh, for procurement with three subsystems that are connected with the register. We have suppliers. We have a catalog as well that can be used. Weaknesses um, and gaps are in pillar one and two, as Gabriel mentioned. The, connected with the framework. I would like to say that 2201 uh, was very difficult for Argentina. It has been supplemented with our decrease, but it, it uh, wasn't good enough for, for 20 years, let's say. Of course, there, there is a weak implementation in terms of sustainability. The, there is a low level of participation of the civil society as recommendations and the lessons that we learned, we totally agree, is that we need a comprehensive regulatory reform so, because everything is so dispersed in the system, we need a, a formal national law to regulate the public procurement and that also integrates the interoperability of the systems. We need to strengthen the National Procurement Office uh, from the institutional dependence, as Gabriel mentioned, the office has gone through different dependencies since it was created. And so it's difficult to have a strategic vision for long term, let's say. We need to provide the office with greater autonomy, greater resources, better digital tools, and we need to focus on the public procurement that is sustainable. From this side, we need to establish a clear policy on procurement that is connected with sustainability, social, environmentally, culturally, from the first time, from the planning process until the evaluation of the impact. It's necessary to have an implementation plan with indicators, with clear indicators so that we can monitor the success of these public policies. We also think that it's important to professionalize the, the procurement role, those in charge, those in charge of the procurement. Maybe we don't pay attention to this, but we should. This is key because everybody that participates in the procurement process must be updated on best practices so that the system in general is efficient and effective. And also we need uh, advanced electronic procurement tools that they should be flexible, modular, they should be safe and secure. It has to be integrated and it could be operated with the subsystems of the National Procurement Office, not only with the ecosystem of the public administration, but also with other systems that are important for the safety and integrity of the also using the data of other organisms or organizations, not having to be providing data all the time when the administration already has them, it should be integrated. Room for improvement, transparency, accessibility to information, to, to make it digital and available. We have several data, we need to exploit them better and we have to make them available to the civil society in general. Also, I would like to tell you uh, that when we were finishing the assessment and we were preparing the action plan along with the IDB and the World Bank and with Gabriel, we believe there is an action plan with short, medium and long-term expectations. 
the National Procurement Office took some actions that I would like to tell you about. It has to do with the user experience, external users, civil society, the operational units for procurement. We provide them with better guidelines, manuals. We created a, like a, a library for them. We made standardized documents, which is very important for the internal management, reduces the lead time for everything. Another important aspect is how we link the National Procurement Office because Within the administration, we were kind of isolated from other organizations that were important at the end of the day. For example, the secretary of the SMEs, for example, to define policies with the anti-corruption um, office as well, to have better practices in terms of transparency. Also with international organizations such as the World Bank or the IDB or we made available to suppliers uh, hubs, uh, suppliers for sustainable suppliers it's a tool that allows suppliers uh, to evaluate free of charge to evaluate their own status in terms of sustainability and also encourage them to participate in international procurement processes. Suppliers usually are afraid of participating in a, here in Argentina because maybe they think they cannot do it. We invited them, we fostered them to do it so that they can know where they are in terms of sustainability. Like this, we give them opportunities to improve. As for value for money, we incorporated that in the general bid specifications, sustainability principles. We have recommendation sheets for the procurement of goods and services with sustainable criteria. We made a manual for that. We are actually updating that as we speak. We incorporated this criteria in the bid specifications so as to have like a framework uh, for value for money, considering sustainability. Okay, I don't want to take more of your time. Gabriel has already shown us where the gaps are. I would like to tell the audience in general that the maps is essentially an opportunity. It's a solid, it's an objective tool that goes beyond uh, administrations and transitions. In Argentina and in our office, there have been many transitions. Sometimes they are connected with uh, politics. But the fact is, this is a policy that goes beyond these changes. It can be used regardless of who is in office or who is in charge of public procurement. It's so useful that Argentina is trying to enter to the OECD and they, and they asked for a, a report on procurement to know how far away they are from the 411 recommendation. And the truth is that MAPS was essential to provide them with an objective view of where public procurement of Argentina is right now. For all this, I believe this document reflects that we need deep reforms, regulatory reforms and sustainability reforms. This will only be possible if we all work together, all the actors that we've mentioned today, and also if we take MAPS and Action Plan as a route, we will be able to have Argentina progress in into a more transparent, more inclusive procurement Muchas system. Gracias, Thank you. Sí, Thank you very much, Soledad. Thanks for the lessons de, learned de este, that uh, you share de, from this MAPS assessment. Let me remind you that you can use the Q&A section in Zoom. Quiero...
In case there are questions, I would like to ask Gabriel something. Connected with what Soledad said about data, I think it's very um, interesting. I believe Argentina has had a many data collection. If we think about the region, there are many data. It's interesting to understand the vision. We can't just have data. Just collecting data is not enough. How can we progress? How? What is expected from Argentina based on the recommendations on the report? Which system should we uh, interconnect with the Compare platform? What's the connection with the use of data, both internally by the government, but also by other players that want to use that information? What can you tell us about that, Gabriel? Well, thanks, Nicolás, for the question. Yes, the, there is a big difference between data and information. And this is one of the key aspects of this assessment. In fact, the National Procurement Office generates and the system COMPRAR generate a great amount of data. But those data, most of them do not translate into relevant information. And that information, it's essential for at least two main objectives that any public procurement system should have. Transparency to provide more um, transparent information and timely information that is relevant to the society in general, <clears throat> through an information system, and as Jean-Jacques said, that is open to everybody, that allow access from any person that is interested in this information on what and how the public sector is contracting. And on the other hand, also, uh, another main objective that is connected with the fact that they can define a policy and a strategy on public procurement that can be implemented, can be measured, their impacts can be measured, <clears throat> and that is quite, and that is not so developed, let's say. Here, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, Soledad has been working for a short time in the office, but she has implemented a series of initiatives that go in that direction. She mentioned some of them, but also standard documents and other, other practices. For example, sustainability principles included. Also, there are some progress made in terms of information, but clearly there is a lot of room for improvement in this sense. And as you were saying and asking about the interaction with other systems, it's clearly a path we have to move on. Uh, with the ECDF, that it's the Administration of Financial Information, that's electronic for the public sector. The lack of that uh, integration prevented, uh, prevented us from having, for this evaluation, data on payment uh, 
lead for invoices, for example, how long the, it takes to, to collect a, an invoice or to pay for an invoice, because the files and procurement are in one system, payments are located in another system, and it's difficult to track and to follow up payments um, corresponding to each process. Files are or, or payment actually have maybe different files and different codes and and it's not easily um, traceable and it's not easily connected with procurement processes there is a, a long path uh, a lot of room for improvement there and it's going to be vital to have a, a solid information system. Another key aspect is the contract management stage. Comprar doesn't uh, include that. This is not a problem that is exclusive to Argentina. Many electronic procurement systems do not include this uh, contract management and uh, it's a, a very important stage let's say because many times the the procurement system concentrate on the stage before the signing of the contract as if it ended there. We know that we have to work on management, on contract management, sorry. It's, it's fundamental to do that. That's what I would say in, that in my opinion, we should highlight and focus on. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Well, I would like to finish with something that Soledad mentioned about the value of this tool. How did you see throughout this transition times and these changes and the, the integration and the exchange that you have with other governments and non-government players. But, you know, it's important for the assessment, but also to implement those changes because you need the support from all of them to implement these recommendations. Can you, can you talk about, can you mention something about this? Oh, well, and here is the, the link to the initiative. Soledad, please. Okay, sorry for that. I'm here. The question is about the interaction, right? Or was it for Gabriel? No, no, it's for you, Soledad. How could you coordinate with other government entities and non-governmental players? How was that taken into account that we were in a transition time, in a time of changes? And a tool like this allows you to have a, a vision that is not affected with these transitions. How was it in Argentina? Yes, right now in Argentina, since we started with the National Procurement Office, we are talking again with the SME uh, secretary. As Gabriel said, we have a lot of information, but we didn't provide it. We didn't know how many suppliers were considered SMEs. We needed to know that to have initiatives. We are also speaking again, a study dialogue with the anti-corruption office. They had participated in the MAPS assessment in the past. We also started talking again with the Observatory on Public Relations of the Australian University. We were invited to several talks so as to start talking again about this also with some of the chambers uh, of public works. I know that this is more about goods and services, but we also started talking again with them. 
de nuestros sistemas y hacer un feedback. Digamos, so as to get feedback from them about the first actions that we implemented both internally and externally. We made some satisfaction survey connected with how they perceived the survey and some of the training that we gave. We took all that feedback to start progressing on this action plan. With the Chamber of uh, Suppliers of the State and Gabriel, we are creating uh, a library to be there um, for suppliers. We need to evolve on these systems. We need to Im improve them so that they can be closer to external users. We have to be there for them so they can participate and they are not afraid of doing so. Basically, that's it. It's a day-to-day a -day work. We uh, it requires a lot of dialogue. We identify the key partners for better practices and to achieve these international standards that we aspire to. Well, thank you very much, Soledad. With this, I would like to thank not just you, but Gabriel, John Jacks, and Javier. Thank you very much for sharing all this information. As I told you before, it will be available in our website. And I invite you to read the full report of Argentina. It has very uh, important information on the main model and SPP model. Please follow us to get more information about MAPS in Argentina and other countries. Thank you very much for your participation. Thanks for being here today with us. Thank you all. Have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye.